Okay guys, please listen carefully to this video because it's important and quite frankly I'm not going to repeat myself again because I keep saying the same thing. Okay, since a few of my active recall videos went a, a lot, just a tiny little bit viral, um, or at least a lot of people watch them. I have gotten thousands of questions and basically it's the same thing Usually about the fact that you guys think you don't have enough time to do active recall or it's always how do I make the questions? I'm actually going to be showing you in real life like me watching a lecture taking questions and showing you step by step How I do this so definitely watch to the end of this video because I will be showing you that after I've basically explained and answered your question So fear no more I've got the A to your Q. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Nella and my channel is Nella Grace. It is a lifestyle channel and I make videos all about studying, productivity, life, health, all that jazz. And today's video, as you can tell, as I've already said, is about active recall. And I just want to thank the sponsors for this video, For Brain. For Brain, I've talked about it before in previous videos, especially my last active recall video. I talked about it and you guys loved it. Okay, so if you didn't know about For Brain, For Brain is an auditory device that uses your voice to boost your brain. It's absolutely amazing. The technology is so cool because it uses the vocal auditory loop to use your voice to stimulate your brain and basically give your brain a mental exercise. It's amazing. It's been scientifically proven to help you to improve your alertness, your focus on a specific task. It helps with memory. It helps with reading and writing, speaking, if you do any public speaking, anything like that. So it's absolutely perfect for learning. And I wanted to tell you guys about this because or remind you guys about it because last time I talked about it in my video, you guys loved it and so many of you bought it, which is so amazing because I truly love this device. What's amazing about it is it can be used for all ages. So this can be used for children to help with their learning. It can be used for people like me and you, in the, you know, people who are either studying or have just come out of studying and now in their professional life because it helps you with your studying as we've already established. But in the professional life, if you want to maybe practice for it, job interviews, if you want to pro if you want to practice for giving presentations, if you're in a job that gives presentations a lot, this is amazing for that. And even for older people, especially like the elderly, if you want to help someone in your life that maybe is in cognitive decline right now, maybe is struggling with some sort of cognitive decline, this something like Forebrain will help them to improve their memory, to improve their cognition. So this is perfect and ideal for all ages in the family and it would be a great Christmas gift. And if you use my code, you can get 40% off your purchase, which is perfect, especially now that it's going to be Christmas. So Active Recall, what is it? I mean, you could just watch all of my videos <laughs> to explain what Active Recall is, but just a quick definition. Active Recall is an evidence-based learning principle that utilizes the idea of actively stimulating your memory during the process of learning. But you guys already knew that, right? So how do you make the question? So what I do is I don't take notes, right? This is the new thing in the study tube world. Stop taking notes. I listen to a lecture. So usually the, they, would, they were live lectures when I was in medical school. So I'd tune into the lecture and I would participate in the lecture by paying attention. So as soon as the lecture slides comes up, every single lecture slide usually has a title. So all I do is copy and paste the lecture slide title and make it into a question. So what instead of it being, if it's a statement, I'll just put what or where or whatever it is that makes that question make sense. This literally takes 10 seconds. I'm doing, I'm putting the question and then I'm engaging into the lecture. So some of you always say, well, how do I have time to make the question while I listen to the lecture? I won't, I won't be able to make the questions. Making a question can literally take you 10 seconds. It's just making the title of the lecture slide a question and then you engage in the lecture and listen to what the teachers or what the lecture is talking about or if you're writing it down write it down really quickly the lecture title you've got yourself a question and then pay attention to the lecture one of the other concerns that i get is that this will take a really long time especially if the lecture is really long like a hundred slides long and all that stuff and i'm like sis welcome to medical school <laughs> i don't know what else to tell you like that's just the reality yes it's gonna take you an hour okay then take an hour. Like, I think sometimes in the study tube world, we, and I, I mean, maybe I'll put my hand up for this if I've been like this as well, or maybe other people, when it comes to learning, have tried to do hacks or, or like quickly learning something or how to learn this so quickly or whatever it is, right? We want um, instant 
I'll say it's a gratification, but it's not gratification. We want like a study hacks all the time. Studying is hard. And if you need to take two hours to go through a lecture, then you need to take two hours. Because what else are you supposed to do? What else are you gonna do? You're just not gonna go through the lecture. And, and I'm gonna give you tough love in this video because I feel like the questions I get sometimes is it's as if people want TikTok studying. Listen, TikTok is 10 seconds because someone has edited it to 10 seconds. When you're seeing someone give a study with me in six minutes, the study with me took six hours, okay? And then they edited it to 10 seconds. So my point being that if you have a hundred lecture slide, then you've got hundred questions. Okay, now we're gonna get into why that's not a bad thing. I might only get 10 out of 100 questions correct or even remember them. It doesn't matter. The point is that you're trying to stimulate your brain and you're trying to give your brain a workout by trying to remember the answers to those things. And if you were really engaging in that lecture, you should be able to remember a lot of the information. And when I say a lot of, I'm being realistic here, guys. I'm not saying that you need to be able to reel off the whole lecture and all that stuff. As long as you can at least get the idea down to answer that question, then you remembered something. And the idea is not to remember everything from that lecture the first time you go through that lecture. And again, this uses the whole forgetting curve thing that I've talked about in my previous videos. So what I do is after I make the questions during the lecture, I usually don't go through those questions straight away. I usually tend to give myself a couple of hours and then go through those questions or I wait till the next day and go through those questions. So in total for one lecture, it could take me as little as an hour or it could take me as much as four hours to go through one lecture. So I know again, some of you are like, I have like three lectures a day and four lectures a day. How on earth am I gonna have time? Well, how else were you going through it? Hmm? How else were you studying your lectures before? Were you, I'm sure you were just making notes, right? So what were you doing? Were you not l look reading through the lectures and then making notes on those whatever, which is passive learning, which is proven that it's not an efficient way of studying, not saying it doesn't work, it's just not efficient or the best. So you were doing something and you were spending that many hours, so just switch it and start spending that many hours with a way that is efficient and evidence-based and it works. So basically, the concerns that I get a lot of the times, I just think that are not realistic in terms of studying, like you are in medical school for the most part, most of you that watch me, it's hard. It's gonna take you a long time and that's okay. That's just the reality. So the next thing that I'm going to do is show you in action, right? Because all talk, 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 <laughs> and no action. I don't know, finish the phrase. I know it's a phrase, it has an ending. Please comment below because it's just left my mind. So I'm gonna show you. So after scouring the internet for a while and realizing that I have now lost access to my university's Moodle, it's okay, shed a tear, decided to just stick to KenHub because KenHub has loads of videos that kind of act as lectures. So I'm going to use one of those videos. I just picked one at random. I ended up at parathyroid, parathyroid gland histology. And I thought I would pick histology because histology is not something that is um, that I find quite easy. And also it's something that is not fresh in my mind right now. So it's not like I'm, I've just picked like anatomy or something, which I'm quite good at because obviously I've gone through six years of medical school. <laughs> um, so I've just picked histology because it's something that I struggle with. And I thought I would jog my memory and actually do it as if I'm learning it for like the first time in a while. And I'm also going to be using GoodNotes on my iPad. This is basically how I would study, okay? Let's go. So I'm going to try and concentrate and just pretend the camera is not there. <laughs> Right, firstly, let me make my title. Hello there, you're just in time. I'm looking for a group of P-shaped endocrine glands, but I'm not quite sure where to find them. Yikes, not down there. Let's try a bit higher up, shall we? Okay, yes, we need to focus on the more superior part of the body. You got it, it's in the neck. Next clue. It helps to regulate calcium levels in the blood. Well, that's technically correct. The thyroid gland does produce hormones that regulate blood calcium levels, but... Okay, so right now, what I'm doing is I'm listening. I've just listened to the lecture and I've just started making uh, questions straight away. So as she is speaking, there's, she's saying facts. So for example, she said what, she said this P-shaped 
um, gland in the top of your neck. So I've just put what shape of the thyroid gland. Obviously that might never come into your exam, but that's something that will help me jog my memory to think what am I talking about. And then the next question I, ju I just put, where are they? She says they're in the neck. Obviously that's not, that's obvious, but it's not anatomical, but it's just for this lecture. Does that make sense? So I'm right, what she's saying as fact, I'm writing it as questions. The next thing was, what do they do? She said that the parathyroid glands help regulate calcium levels in the blood and that they also produce hormones. So I remember that already because I've wrote, I've wrote those as questions and that's what I would answer later on. So as she's speaking, I'm just going, as, as she's saying it, I'm writing questions straight away and I'm, I'm quick too with the questions. Because this is a fast video, I'm having to write really fast, but usually lectures, they're slower, they take longer time and spend more time on each part but you're seeing the pace of which, of which I'm doing like this and I'm really paying attention. I'm really listening while I'm writing this um, because so that I can remember. So that's what I'm doing. So guys, just a quick disclaimer that I used this video because it was the best thing that I could find. I don't have access to my lectures anymore. But when you're listening to lectures, like I've already explained, lectures are usually a lot slower. They're not 10 minutes. They're like an hour long or if not longer. So you can just write your question and then take the rest of the time to concentrate on what the teacher is saying because I'm not a big fan of multitasking um, because it's just proven not to be the most productive thing to do. But in this video, I'm doing a little bit more multitasking as in I'm listening, I'm writing at the same time. But that's not what I would recommend um, doing a lot of. Like I said, this is particularly good for lectures, this method that I'm doing because lectures are slower, they are longer. But I still manage to write the questions because I've got the practice um, over many years of knowing how to do both. But um, if you find that you are not catching information. You might just need to pause videos when you're watching like this and rewind them um, to get that information again so that you're not missing anything. So that was done. And if you could see the screen recording of that, you see how frantically I was writing those questions. And that's because I write questions as I go and they're not like this big, big scientific questions. I'm just writing what the lecture is saying. So don't overthink your questions. That's the first thing. Don't overthink your questions. If you're like me and you don't really care about this first this first draft of questions, don't care, don't think about how cute they look and all that stuff. Okay, you can do that later. Right now you're trying to learn. Okay? You're not trying to make pretty notes. So right now, as you can see with mine, right now, you probably can't see it, but I'll put it here. As you can see with mine, like it's all over the place. Like I go this way, I go that way. There's nothing cute about it. So what I will do is not straight away. Usually I'll stay a few hours, like I already said, and then I'll come back and I will answer the questions. But I'm going to answer them now just so you guys can see what I do. And then you can get like a gist of how I actually then learn. I'm just going to say the answers out loud, but this is what I would write down. So for example, the first one said, what shape are the parathyroid glands? I remember her saying P, P-shaped. Um, she's, what, where are they? They're in the neck here, as I remember from the picture. Uh, I would write down they're in the neck, if that's what the lecture said. If it wanted more anatomical like um, explanation, then I would explain that. They are behind the thyroid gland. There, there's four of them and they are on either side of the thyroid gland lobes. Again, she said that in the lecture. So basically when I write a question, I will go in as much detail as I can for that question. So instead of just putting where are they, instead of just putting neck, I will go into detail as much as I remember, like I've just said. The next question is what do they do? I remember um, she says from the lecture, she says that the parathyroid parathyroid glands create hormones like the parathyroid hormones that regulate calcium and then the question what is the gross anatomy again it's like what I said before they lie behind the thyroid gland and they are on either side of the thyroid lobes and there's four of them and they're pea-sized um what latin name of parathyroid gland I remember it said um parathyroid gl no glandulae parathyroid parathyroid Parathyroid. Parathyroidia. Um, I'll spell it here, like from what I remember. What hormone is made by parathyroid gland? I've already answered that. It was the parathyroid hormone. Uh, what does it do? It regulates calcium levels. It increases the calcium levels in the blood by uh, taking them out of the bones, taking calcium from the bones, and it increases the um, blood circulation of calcium. And then it was, what does it do? I've already answered that. What is it, it, what is its antagonist? As in PTH. And it was calcitonin. What stain is used to prepare those slides? It was H&E stain, hematoxylin and eosin. 
what color does the nuclei stain i think it was the hematoxylin stains the nuclei a darker purple uh, and then what color does its proteins and cytoplasm stain and it was a lighter pink that they stain because they do the hematoxylin first and then it stains all the nuclei then they wash it off and then put eosin on top she said and then that stains the cytoplasm and the um, proteins pink see i'm having to close my eyes because i'm seeing the lecture and i'm doing active recall right now guys like literally i have not gone through something like this in years like as in the parathyroid gland specifically obviously like I said, I do remember a little bit of it, but this is purely from what I remember from this lecture. So, to the residential geek. <laughs> so, I basically remembered a 10 minute video purely because I wrote questions and they made me think. I had to think, I had to think, I had to think. And now, I promise you, I will know that so much more than if I had just made notes as she was speaking. So, like I said, usually instead of saying it to you, what I would be doing is writing down the answers. And then I will go over the, to the video again and i'll just skim through to get my answers to make sure that i've got those answers correct because i don't need to watch it all again in slow motion i can just skim through it see what my if my answers were correct see what i missed out add it in to my answers um correct whatever i got wrong that's it move on to the next one as you guys can see i also spoke it out loud which is where full brain comes in what i will do is i will take the headset put it on and i will rehearse the answer answers out loud and activate that like i said that uh, vocal audio loop activate my brain, get my brain working, get it exercising and increase my memory. So I'm doing so much to help me to learn and to remember these things. And it's not just because I'm this smart person, guys, this just works. Like this is what you're supposed to do and it works. It might not work for you, I understand, but this is what I do. And as you can tell, I just remembered a 10 minute lecture quite easily. Can I just say as well, guys, do not get overwhelmed, okay? I probably have a couple more years of practice doing this than you do. So the first time you do something like this, it might be really hard for you. You might not be able to get all the questions, all of this stuff. You might come across a lot of challenges. It doesn't mean that you are bad or that you are just not smart or whatever. It just means that you need more practice. The first time I did something like this, it probably wasn't as easy for me. I know it wasn't as easy for me, but I've just learned over time. So give yourself time and try it. Don't lock it until you try it. And if you do try it a couple of times, maybe for a module, maybe for a year, maybe for a few months, and it's not working, then it's okay. You know, try something else. But just to encourage you that it's okay if you don't do it as well, if it takes you a bit longer, if it takes you a bit longer to kind of get the hang of it, um, it just means maybe you just need more time. Or it might not be for you, and you can just try something else, like flashcards. <laughs> so guys, that is practically how I do the thing. I hope that this was helpful and I hope that it really like opened up your eyes to personally how I did active recall in medical school and this is how I got like those 100% that I'm always talking about in my videos. This is how I did it and this is like literally there's nothing more to it, nothing more, nothing less. So yeah, I really hope that was helpful. If you have any more questions, do not leave them in the comment down below because I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I will catch you guys in my next video. I am going to put a playlist here all with all of my active recall videos so that you can really watch them. And I promise you, if you watch them in detail and you critically think about it, you really will get it and you'll be able to start practicing this in your life today. Thank you so much for watching once again. And if you made it this far, that means you really enjoyed this video. So click the subscription button below so you don't miss any more videos like this. And if you're already subscribed, then thank you. I love you very much. See you in my next video. Bye.